Well, a disturbing affront to the First Amendment after the Department of Justice is caught conspiring to smear media outlets who question the department's investigations. Internal emails obtained by the dailycaller.com show members of Attorney General Eric Holder's communications staff, in fact, the communications uh, acting director, the director, Tracy Schmaler, uh, directly collaborating regularly with the left-wing advocacy group Media Matters for America in an attempt to discredit media coverage of several DOJ scandals, including uh, the new Black Panther Party case and the Fast and Furious investigation. Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen has more from our D.C. Bureau. James? Megan, good afternoon. The Department of Justice took nine months to produce to the conservative website, The Daily Caller, 69 pages of materials. These materials obtained under the Freedom of Information Act include multiple emails to and from Tracy Schmaller, the director of DOJ's Office of Public Affairs, in which Schmaller can be seen corresponding with various staffers at the liberal outfit Media Matters. These emails reveal Schmaller as a tireless defender of Attorney General Eric Holder, but also as a savvy partisan player, sometimes obliging requests for documents that Media Matters writers could use to undermine the credibility of Fox News personalities and administration critics like Congressman Darrell Issa, but also sometimes reaching out to Media Matters with her own ideas for stories. It is clearly a pure, unadulterated attempt to lie about the news. In one case, we have the spokesman from the Justice Department emailing Media Matters and saying, in effect, why don't you do a story on this? I just saw something on Fox, and I don't like it, and why don't you attack it? I'm sure they're watching this right now, though. I don't think there's any question about it. Six months ago, the email show, Schmaller indeed watched Tea Party figure Judson Phillips appear on America's newsroom with substitute anchor Jamie Colby. In that segment, Phillips made the claim, vigorously disputed by the Obama administration, that Operation Fast and Furious was politically motivated, conceived in order to help usher in, quote, draconian gun control laws. You see this, Schmaller emailed Media Matters Deputy Research Director Matt Gertz about 90 minutes later, attaching a transcript, completely false. Wide receiver and Hernandez two operations with some similarity to Fast and Furious that were launched under the previous administration, put this to a lie. There's been lots of coverage on previous Bush operations. By that afternoon, Media Matters' website featured a blog post attacking Phillips' segment with Colby. Media Matters is ostensibly a tax-exempt nonprofit devoted to exposing media bias. However, its founder, conservative-turned-liberal David Brock, has characterized the group's mission as the waging of war on Fox News. The Justice Department declined to comment for this story. A spokesman for Media Matters told me the group would comment only if it was offered a chance to appear live on this network, which request this reporter was in no position to grant. Megan. <laughs> Thanks, James. All right. So one of the big questions is, will anyone in the Justice Department be held accountable for this? Jay Sekulow is the chief counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. He also served as a faculty member for the Office of Legal Education at the United States Department of Justice, where he instructed assistant U.S. attorneys on certain legal matters. Jay, welcome. Uh, so, you know, Media Matters is going to do it. It's designed to, you know, bring down Fox News. How's that going? Right. Uh, but that's so it's yeah, going to do what it's going to do. But, uh, but this is the Department of Justice. They serve yeah. all of us. Tracy Schmaler works for you and me and all the viewers right. who are watching this program right now. What is she doing? Well, what she's doing is using Media Matters as an outside uh, public relations consultant uh, for the United States Department of Justice. I, I looked at the, uh, I've got the emails uh, that have gone back and forth that the uh, Daily Caller was able to get their hands on. And the fact of the matter is, when you read through this material, you see that not only uh, is Media Matters being consulted with ideas and concepts, but stories are actually being pitched to Media Matters. And the Media Matters job is to undercut what we're discussing right now on Fox News. And here's the problem that I think the Department of Justice has. The idea that you would utilize a source like Media Matters, which is not a news agency, uh, but the purpose of Media Matters is, as you noted, to discredit Fox and those that appear on Fox. The fact of the matter is to utilize them as a shill or to utilize them as your proxy uh, in engaging in a, a dispute, whether it's on the uh, new Black Panther Party and the denial of uh, the Department of Justice to bring civil rights actions against them, or whether it is on the coverage of Fast and Furious, should really raise serious concerns, not just with uh, people inside the Department of Justice, which I think should be very concerned about this, but also to uh, those legislative oversight within the House and Senate. But also, as you just said, Megan, 
to people like us. Why is it that the, our Department of Justice is consulting with media matters to get their message out or to get a different message out? Why are they not using their public relations or their Office of Public Communications to respond to inquiries? Right. Why are they? The question needs to be asked. Utilizing media matters to do their work. That's the real they, issue here. I mean, there's a reason they go to media matters, you know, and its bias sure. is well known and, you know, open and notorious. But I can't tell you the number of stories we've done uh, that involve the Department of Justice where we... We, I mean, we would love to get the Department of Justice on. We would love to have Tracy Schmaler on the show so she can offer the DOJ's take on any story we're doing. We would love that. They don't come on. Yeah. They don't talk. Of course but not. now we find out right. they do talk. Oh, yes, they do. They are creating the message, but only in, in the forum you know, the most biased, mission-driven yeah. forum there is right now in, in terms of you know, media Look, critics. Right. Well, DOJ, the Department of Justice, unfortunately, is utilizing media matters as their proxy to engage public opinion rather than, like you said, addressing it directly on a credible network like Fox News. What do they do? Well, they go to media matters instead to get an inf some of their information on leaking or not leaking, but giving documents to media matters to place a story. And the idea that our United States Department of Justice is using media matters as their fronting group uh, is absurd. And here's the real fundamental problem. And I think it goes back to everything we've been discussing the last couple of years on the whole way the Department of Justice has gone down here. The reality is when the Department of Justice has an issue, they need to confront it head on. For good or for ill, whichever way it comes out, they, that's the idea with the Department of Justice and its integrity and its ability to uh, defend our civil rights yeah. and to engage the issues Come they out have and to talk engage. about it. No, wait, what I want, are they but, doing uh, but I want to talk to you more, more about this. In particular, yeah. what, if anything, should happen to Tracy and whether this is authorized by Eric Holder after the break? Joining me again is Jay Sekulow on this. Jay, I want to ask you, one of the things that jumped out at me in the Daily Caller report was not only is Tracy Schmaler coordinating with Media Matters to attack news organizations, including most particularly Fox News, but she appears to right. be praising the, the Media Matters pieces that go after current and former DOJ officials. There was a guy named Chris right. Coates who found himself in this, uh, the New Black Panther case where there was, you know, voter intimidation at the polls with the guys with the billy clubs in Philadelphia. And that right. guy worked for the DOJ and was in a very uncomfortable position, but he did back up the account of J. Christian Adams suggesting that they, they had some questionable policies at the DOJ. Media Matters does its normal hit piece on those two guys. She writes, great piece. One of these guys, right. I mean, these are either former or current DOJ guys. I mean, what should happen to her, Jay? Because is this really, is this well, Tracy or is this Eric Holder? Well, you know, no one knows for sure, and that I think we got to get more information before we can say, does this go to Eric Holder? But here is the problem. First of all, Tracy's a senior person uh, within the, the Department of Justice. Uh, there are other emails, by the way, Megan, when you go through this, where uh, Media Matters notifies the Department of Justice of a story that ran on Fox and say, you better get ready for this. How do you want to respond? I and mean, it goes back and forth with uh, responses. And then you're right. Then they get the email praising them for the piece, where it's an information about a hit piece on a former DOJ employee. They have an office of professional responsibility and I don't know if Tracy's a lawyer or not a lawyer but I will tell you this the office of professional responsibility should be looking at this because the idea that the Department of Justice is using media matters as its proxy as its front group or its outside you know unpaid consultant uh, to do this is outrageous and when professional ethics are involved which raises a serious issue here and media journalism ethics I mean the idea that you're planting stories with media matters or or giving them information to go after former employees of DOJ that should that is over the top and needs to be seriously investigated by the Office of Professional Responsibility inside DOJ. Does it go to Eric Holder? I mean, who knows? You know, and I, I suspect between now and the election, we probably don't find out. Yeah. But there are people looking at this now, and I think as long as we stay on it, we, we need to demand an answer to that. Why is it that Media Matters gets a special relationship with the United States Department of Justice? Somebody needs to be asking that question. Jay Sekulow, thank you so much. Well, Thanks, coming up